Visa on arrival fee to be dropped for 20 plus countries. And Pax Santiago wants 2024 tourist levy paid before arrival. Stay tuned for details. Selamat siang. Welcome to the latest news from Bali in Indonesia. This is December 13th, 2023, and my name is Bruce. And what is the weather like today? Steamy, steamy, steamy. 30.6 degrees Celsius, and the humidity is 68%. Wind speed is 9.4 kilometers per hour. And, well, it looks like a nice day. Not going to rain, I don't think. Mm, that's not necessarily very good. And so we had some big rain the other day, uh, about two days ago. Wow, big huge storm came in, everything got wet, and it's been dry since then. So the rainy season is still not really totally upon us. And I don't know, what is it like wherever you are in Bali? Okay, let's get right into this. So the visa on arrival is not ex exactly a new story. It came out right when I did the last video, I think right after that. And it, what it is, is at this stage, is that the government, according to Pak Sandiaga, and, and he says Pak Jokowi is in on this, is planning to drop the 500,000 rupiah visa fee for 20 or more countries, and that is yet to be decided. He said that there will be some discussion about this, how many countries there are going to be in total. Pak San Diego said the nominated countries are the ones that have the highest number of foreign tourists outside of countries that already have visa-free visits. He said that the top countries, Australia, China, India, South Korea, the United States, England, France, Germany, Netherlands, Japan, Russia, Taiwan, New Zealand, Italy, Spain, and five other additional countries related to investment contributions and the, their economic impact on the country. These are Middle Eastern countries, such as the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and several other countries. Pak Santiago said that the conversation was ongoing, but the tourism ministry was working with the Director General of Immigration and the Minister of Law and Human Rights to finalize the proposal. He said, in the next month it will be finalized, and after that we will receive direction from the president, and the policy will be followed up with immigration. Okay, and so that's basically it. The 500,000 would be pshht, canned for certain countries. And, well, lots of talk on social media, a lot of chatter on social media, and as you would expect for foreigners, <laughs> overwhelmingly in favor of this because, well, take a look at a family of four comes in, 500000 a piece, that's two million, two million more that you can spend, or you can have a cheaper vacation, keep the money in the bank in your home country. But Indonesian officials are hoping that you are going to spend that money here, somewhere, wherever you are, whether it's Java, Bali, Raja Ampat, the Malukus, they want to see you getting that money into the economy. So, in terms of tourists, yeah, I can't see the downside here. Although there were a few people on social media who said, no, it's already so crowded here, this is going to make it even more crowded, it's over tourist. And that was, well, far in the minority in terms of opinions. In terms of locals, Indonesians, well, mixed bag. Nilo Jelantik, of course, had something to say, and she <laughs> sent a message to Pak Sandiaga that started out bro, <laughs> which I found pretty cute. And she said, okay, look, this is, I'm just paraphrasing this whole thing. She said, look, we need tourists. Bali needs tourists. A lot of people depend on it for their living. But, hey, let's socialize the do's and don'ts. Remember the do's and don'ts? Was that ever actually socialized? She said, we don't want people coming in on, the, on these free tourist visas and then taking jobs from people or misbehaving. So let's socialize the do's and don'ts. Okay, that's one thing. She said, when's the last time you were down in Changu or Ubud? Traffic. And what about infrastructure? She said, wow, lots of holes in the road by the piers, by the harbors. 
there's a lot of infrastructure work to be done. She said, we don't want to have a mass number of people coming in, being disappointed, and then never coming back to Bali again. So she said, let's talk some more about this. I don't know how that's going to work out. You know, Ibu Jelantik is running for office coming up soon. And so comments on her Instagram channel. Some were in favor, probably people working in the tourist industry. Great, there'll be more people here, of course. And so that's going to help you. Um, some people saying, hey, don't sell Bali cheap. Why are we doing this? We're getting rid of this. What happened to quality tourism? You remember, quality tourism was being officially defined as people that spend a lot of money here. And so quality versus quantity. Well, it looks like right now the government is going back to the quantity side of the equation. Let's bring in more and more and more people here. Even though infrastructure is not done yet, we still have the tra trash problems, the traffic problems. We've got pe petty crime and scams. So there's a lot of stuff that still needs to be fixed here. So just because this has been announced does not mean it's going to happen or exactly when it's going to happen. You know, a lot of times these things get announced and then, well, they're either abandoned or it takes a while for it to happen. So if you're counting on it to happen on January 1st, I wouldn't count on it at this point. It could happen. You can never tell here in Indonesia, especially with the visas. You know, things change here all the time in terms of visas. So what do you think? Good, bad, indifferent? Eh, it's 50 bucks Australian, 500,000 rupees. Who cares? I don't know. Let's go on and talk about Another payment is coming up, and that one specifically in Bali. San Diego Uno suggests levying 150,000 rupees for foreign tourists to Bali to withdraw before leaving. So, not the best translation here. As you know, we talked about this many times before, there is going to be a fee of 150,000 rupees for foreign tourists entering Bali. This is planned to be implemented on the 14th of February, and the aim with paying first is to avoid accumulation when foreign tourists arrive at the airport. Pak San Diego said, we don't want a buildup when they arrive at the airport. He said, you are not going to be charged for this at the hotel. He said, we want to do as little as possible at the airport. We want to make entry smooth. And so we want this to be done before the departure of tourists when they're coming from abroad. So I'm assuming here, that this will be able to be done online, uh, like the visa on arrivals now, and you would pay your 150,000 and get some kind of electronic proof of payment, which you could then show. Now, in terms of making it easier when you get into the airport, yeah, if you can pay in advance and you don't have to line up and pay for it when you get to the airport and you're tired and you just wanna, get into a taxi or whatever and go to your hotel and take a shower and have a drink and chill. So not a bad idea. And what is the 150,000 gonna be used for? We can bring this up again. Okay, it was originally going to protect culture. It was going to enhance Balinese culture. It was going to spread Balinese culture to the masses coming here and then it said 70% going to go to clean up the island, clean up the trash on the island. So what is it actually going to be used for? Who knows? We may find out once it starts being collected. But the plan is the 14th. And this is whether you arrive by land, sea, or air. And this is only for Bali. If you are not coming to Bali, you don't have to pay it. And so you would get in for free if you're one of those countries that's going to have the visa on arrival free b abolished. Well, then you wouldn't have to pay anything. But you couldn't come into Bali. If you come into Bali, you're going to have to pay the 150000 So Pakistan Diego says, let's get it done before you leave. Okay. And here's something I haven't talked about in a long time. Remember this channel used to be primarily about COVID. Jakarta government urges mask wearing vaccination to prevent COVID-19 spread. Yes, it is back, but not in huge numbers. 
This is mask wearing for vulnerable groups to prevent the spread of COVID-19. According to the head of the Epidemiological Surveillance and Immunization at Jakarta Health Service, said, if you are in a vulnerable group, you need to wear a mask. And he said, people need to be strict about wearing a mask, washing their hands, maintaining good room ventilation, and avoiding cigarette smoke. The provincial government also appealed to vulnerable people to complete the COVID-19 vaccinations because if they test positive for COVID-19, they'll be at greater risk of severe infection and even death. People over 50 who have not completed the vaccination, as well as those with concurrent hypertension, diabetes, stroke, heart disease, chronic kidney disease, cancer, tuberculosis, HIV, and other immunological disorders, have to complete the immunization. The government is offering 15 types of vaccines for children, as well as one to four rounds free of cost. This is in Jakarta. I don't know about other places in Indonesia. The Jakarta Health Office had there were 271 confirmed cases from December 4th to December 10th. And this is higher than the period 27th to the 3rd of December when there were only 80. The wave of COVID-19 cases tends to increase every six months due to seasonal shifts that affect people's immunity, according to this article. And some more on COVID. Epidemiologist says new COVID-19 JN1 variant behind surge in infections. The COVID-19 infections in Jakarta has been on the rise since last month. Dr. Dickie Budiman, I talked about him many times during the pandemic, the epidemiologist, he said he's discussed the current situation with his colleagues in Europe, and he said it is increasing worldwide, new infections. According to him, this can be seen in the increase in hospitalizations due to emergence of the new virus variant JN1. Pot Dr. Dickey noted that this subvariant is very easy to mutate and infect people. He also believes that JN1 is more resistant to vaccination. However, he stressed that people can avoid it by implementing the 5M health protocols, keeping a safe distance, never happened, washing hands, wearing a mask, avoiding crowds, and reducing mobility. He said vaccinations remain fundamental, but 5M is no less important. The epidemiologist hoped that the government would take serious measures in response to this worrying phenomena. Booster vaccination seems to be effective in overcoming this infection, he said. We hope that the government and the public will raise awareness about the increase in COVID cases. So far in December, there have been two deaths, just two. Boy, remember how many deaths we had back during the height of the pandemic? So COVID is back, but very mild. What's happening here in Bali? Haven't seen any reports on cases here right now. We may have some, I know people that have flu, could be COVID, who knows, but I don't see anybody panicking or worrying about it. And one more story on COVID, no travel requirements related to COVID-19 so far, says the Transportation Ministry. The ministry spokesperson said there are no mandatory protocols for travelers at this time. She noted that regarding travel requirements or conditions related to COVID, the Ministry of Transportation will refer to related ministries or agencies such as the Ministry of Health. According to this article, the latest cases have been dominated by the Omicron XBB 1.5 subvariant. So there's a rise in cases in Jakarta, but at this point, well... The numbers are not much to be worried about, in my opinion. But it's always good to be prepared. Okay, enough for COVID. And here's an interesting story. I'm interested in hearing what Aussie uh, viewers think about this. How this country dethroned Bali as Aussie's tourist top destination. So everybody knows Bali has long been a top destination for Australians because of the beaches, the closeness, and of course, it's cheap. But for the first time in eight years, the Island of the Gods has been dethroned in what has been dubbed a significant shift in Aussie's vacationers' behavior. Who's been dethroned? Japan. New data from Expedia found Tokyo has knocked Bali out of the top spot for international travel over the summer. Coming in third is Singapore, followed by Osaka and Kyoto, and then New York. Some have argued Japan's rising popularity could be due to many Aussies seeking snow 
being forced to rule out more expensive winter sport destinations such as Europe or the U.S. It's also been suggested, however, that Bali's recent crackdown on antisocial tourist behavior could be tarnishing its laid-back reputation. Expedia Brands Managing Director said that while Bali is normally neck and neck, with Hawaii and Fiji as top travel destinations this time of the year, cost of living pressures at home were causing Aussies to shake up their holiday plans. It's really quite interesting, he said, as there has been a shift this year with people looking for cultural as well as a weather change. 100% without a doubt this is being driven by financial pressures. While Bali is considered a cost-effective holiday, where the Australian dollar stretches quite far, the Japanese yen has plummeted to a 15-year low against the euro this year. This has created a unique opportunity for savvy travelers to holiday in the land of the rising sun. Japan is a really good option for people who don't want to travel in North America or Europe, but who want the snow, he said. The people are very welcoming. It's not a hard time zone change. And without a doubt, snow sports and winter sports play a part in outbound travel for Australians in the summer. With the euro and U.S. dollar, once foreign exchange comes into the equation, it just becomes really expensive for Australians. According to one person interviewed, everything is so colorful, the nature, the cities, it's got a great mix of nature and tradition, but also modern cultural things. For me, as someone that hasn't traveled much in Asia, it's a good start, good way to start. It's quite accessible and very immersive travel experience. Adventure Holiday company Intrepid Travel said Japan was a top-selling destination in its recent cyber sale and as a result had to increase 2024 departures by 51%. Intrepid has seen a surge in interest in travelers looking to explore Japan, according to the managing director. According to Mr. Finch from Expedia, the growing interest in Japan also demonstrates a shift in Aussies looking for more cultural holidays abroad. Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto all came up in our top 10 international destinations over summer, all of which are culturally rich. People who travel to Bali, however, really seem to relax. What? What about the culture in Bali? There's a lot more here than bintangs and singlets. Another person interviewed for this traveled to Bali in 2022 and loved it so much she returned in June of this year. It was definitely a lot more affordable than going anywhere else in Asia at this time. It's cheaper than going to Japan, it's more accessible, and people there are so lovely and the weather is consistently beautiful. She said, I've been there the year before and I loved it. Mr. Finch said that while Bali is known for its warm and friendly culture as well as the quality of its resorts and villas, recent crackdowns on antisocial tourist behavior could deter specific kinds of travelers. There may be a perception that Bali, for certain traveling types, is not quite as relaxed now. Gone are the days when you could rent a scooter and have a few drinks and not wear a helmet. Yeah, thank God. The law is definitely taking a closer look at some behaviors, such as travelers behaving in an offensive way to local cultures, particularly in public places. Easily solved, behave yourself. Indonesia Institute founder Ross Taylor said that there's been an impressive rebound in tourism in Bali, especially in WA, where it's only a three-hour flight away, and that comparing the two holiday destinations, Japan and, and Bali, is akin to weighing apples and oranges. The rebound since COVID has been quite dramatic. If you look at 12 months, he said, at the end of December, there'll be about 420,000 people from WA going to Bali. When you think about the population of 2.7 million people, that's absolutely astonishing, he said. In Perth, there are seven flights a day with five airlines, so pretty intense competition. Mr. Taylor did concede, however, that the days of Bali presenting an ultra-cheap holiday option were just about over. Generally speaking, Bali is getting more expensive now, but it's too early to say whether that will impact tourist numbers. Pre-COVID, Aussies used to get free visa on arrival, But since COVID, they've charged $50, and we talked about that before, right? In addition to that, come February, the state government of Bali will introduce an additional $15 environmental tax per head. Mr. Taylor said cheaper accommodation options were still available on the island, though travelers might need to shop around to find more budget-friendly options. Regardless, 
Bali will remain a popular option, especially as historic rivals Fiji and Hawaii continue to drift further out of their reach for Aussies feeling the pinch. Too expensive to get there, I guess. This coincides with a rising trend in Aussie travelers seeking more affordable destinations, affording similar cultural experiences, such as opting for a stay in Manchester over London. I think it's a good thing that travelers are being a little more creative and expansive with their search and doing a bit more research, he said. The trend is likely to continue until the Australian dollar improves and the cost of living pressures ease. So what do you think there, Aussies? Would you rather go to Japan than Bali? So, comments, welcome. Okay, let's go on to Chili's and the, the cost of food, the rising cost of food, because Pak Jokowi has weighed in on this now. Jokowi mentioned supply and distribution problems. President Jokowi revealed the culprit behind the recent chili price fluctuations. He said the culprit was supply and distribution problem. Because of this problem, the president said, the price of peppers differs quite significantly from one region to another. If you read comments, you saw how cheap they were in Lombok compared to here in Bali. He said there's a supply problem, there's a distribution problem, because in one price, the, the price for peppers is 50000 but in Java, it's 110000 up to 130000 Jokowi has asked his ministers not to remain silent in responding to this problem. He asked the ministers, especially the Minister of Trade, to look into the problem in detail so that it can be resolved immediately. Another problem that Jokowi touched on was the Christmas and New Year holiday. He asked all ministries involved in this matter to anticipate all possible possibilities, especially regarding homecoming flows. He said, based on a survey from the Ministry of Transportation, there will be 107 million people traveling during the Christmas and New Year holiday. Those domestic people, 107 million. So the president asking everybody, be ready. We're going to have masses. And here in Bali, you know the traffic is going to shoot up as we get cars coming in from Java. Okay, that is it for today. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today, stay safe, and I will see you next time.